Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be working with you today looking at Maya 2009 new feature which is render passes. A render pass is an element of the final composite image and we can output now these elements just by itself in a separate file and then you can use your favorite compositing package to compile all these elements to give you that one final rendered image. And the benefit of having these passes is that it's not af affecting your render time at all because these passes or these elements are being uh, calculated when the final image being rendered. So what Maya is doing is just intercepting that rendered or the f last call of the render and just takes these elements one by one according to your choice. So that will be very beneficial for you and your rendering progress. So let's have a quick look on how we do that. So let's examine our Maya scene. We have a couple of spotlights that will give us direct illumination, which uh, one of them is yellow and the other one is kind of bluish. And we also have indirect illumination that's coming from the IBL node in a form of uh, final gathering. And the reason I'm pointing this out because that will be determining the type of passes that we're going to be choosing for today's exercise. So let's go to the uh, render settings. Uh, of course you put the same as you did before in the file name and the image format that you wish to output and now we go to the passes tab if you notice now the mentor array tabs has changed a little bit uh, it's it's the same exact tab, uh, or actually the same features that you had before it's just aligned horizontally rather than vertically that makes it faster for us to find what we're looking for so for example for the passes now I'm gonna go choose the passes that I wish and you'll see that we have lots of passes that we can work with. For a full uh, explanation of all these packages please refer to the Maya docs and you will see here that we have all these pass render passes and the description of each one. So let's choose a few of them now. Let's go with beauty I'm holding the control button to choose, to uh, to add to my choice of selection. Once I'm done with my selection, I'm just going to hit create and close. Now all these passes are waiting here in the scene passes. So the scene passes is just the the passes that I've chose to contribute to the scene. Now if I want to associate these passes per layer we can do that so for this example we're just working with the master layers we don't have any if you look here we only have one layer which is the master layer we don't have any other layers so once I do that I choose my passes I add them in here of course you can move or add more passes from here and just add them to the associated render layer once you if you choose ambient occlusion make sure that the feature is enabled uh, and that is under indirect lighting which is in here all right so once I'm I all I've done is just added the passes that I wish to contribute to this particular layer and that's it pretty much all I'm gonna do now is go to my render view and just hit render Once the render is complete, you can go view the f uh, result of your render passes via file, load render pass, and now you can see the actual passes that we just rendered. So for example, this is just the diffuse with no shadow. This is the uh, ambient occlusion. And let's look a, have a quick look at the shadow because it will come up with something that uh, most people will not expect. Actually what's happening is that uh, Maya will render the shadow as a negative value of what you expect it to see and then reverse it in the final comp. So what you can do with via, via this file is when you take it to your uh, compositing package is just hit invert or inverse and you can use it with your rest of your compositing files. Uh, since again this is done via the uh, render view the files will be stored under your uh, images folder and your uh, project and you'll see them under the temp 
and you will notice that all the passes now are stored each one under its own uh, folder and you'll notice the file name is here you can change that behavior from the render settings under the comment tab you can insert the render pass name here and then followed by uh, the file name so for example we can have it like this and now when we render we will have the file naming convention is the the, the file name that we just assigned for example fourth car and then followed by the render pass so let's do see how that will work now let's examine our rendered files you'll notice them they will be stored under the uh, images folder and they will come up as we expect the file name followed by the render pass name so for example this is the ambient occlusion and the coverage is a silhouette of your render the depth which is a Z depth the direct irradiance and if you remember we had two lights one is yellow and one is blue and this is what we're seeing here the contribution between the two lights so this is the direct irradiance the reflection and refraction and remember when we talked about the shadow it's the negative or the inverse of what you expect to see All right one one quick look at the uh, render passes themselves if you double click on the uh, render pass you will see here in the attribute editor for it the type of uh, pass it is the pass uh, group names uh, the frame buffer type and such on you can obviously change them from here and you can customize them according to your need all right so some paths will have three channels and some will be four so remember that when you're choosing your passes also remember when you're choosing ambient occlusion pass it's the controlled by the indirect lighting and this is pretty much the options that we have uh, as the, just the number of rays if you want to revert or actually if you want to choose the old method you can still use the render layers and choose the ambient occlusion override now let's have a quick look at our render passes tokens we already covered a little bit here than when we placed the render pass name uh, you can have more options by right clicking and choosing the token of your choice we have few of them here also if you already had passes added in your associated pass section that means mentor ray will export or will render out passes if you flip to an open EXR format you will notice that this becomes a frame buffer naming becomes available for you and automatic is actually naming that according to here if you can read it render pass type render pass camera you can also flip to custom and right click and insert your token All right. so let's uh, flip to something simple here we're gonna go with uh, JPEG just for this example and you can see now this becomes disabled because you're not outputting buffers here it's only for our open XR and let's remove all these passes as if we're starting from scratch all right so for this exercise we're gonna associate the lights we want to see the light contribution actually per light Per layer so for example we're gonna place light one with the file with the objects and the uh, the car and the scene and we're gonna put it in a different layer and we call this light one now let's do another one for the second light and now we have two layers these are render layers the render layer should be used to a way to organize your scene parts so for example in this scenario we want to see what is the light contribution for this particular scene I want to output it as passes and we'll see how to do that now so all I've done right now is I have two render layer one has 
light 1 in it and the second one has light 2. So let's go to my render passes and I'm gonna choose actually let me remove this here and we start from scratch and I'm gonna use here the diffuse without shadow and let's get specular as well. So I chose two passes and I can use pass prefix and suffix. So for example uh, I wanna say this is light one and it will end up with the naming convention that is called podcast and I wanna create a set that will combine these two under, under that one name and I was called this light one pass create and close so now you will see I have the naming comes out as I expected and I have a set that says set light pass one or light sorry light one pass you can obviously add these two in here and say alright add them to my passes but since I already grouped them under this one set I can just add the set and you can go to your window relationship editor under rendering sets render pass sets that is and you will notice that now this light one pass has the the naming or, or actually the two passes that we chose and they come up named correctly so I can do another one for example sorry let's go to light 2 now I'm remember I'm adding the render pass or the passes that I have choice according to the layer so light 1 which is the layer that is called light 1 has these two passes. Let's go to light 2 which is that na layer name and I'm gonna create this I'm just gonna rename this to be light 2 and and let's say it's, let's, let's say I chose uh, actually let's, let's get the same stuff but I'm just gonna add one of them here so I have the pass set and just one layer but what if I want to add another one but without a set let's say which is the diffuse without shadow here so now this diffuse without shadow is not associated with this light to pass so I can easily fix that by going to my relationship editor and I see here light one pass has these two light two pass only have this one so I can just press shift and I've just added it to the set alright now for light two render set uh, render layer I'm adding this pass set actually I can rename that to make it easy to read and this light one going back to the render layers so light one will have the light one pass set light two will have the light two pass set All right. So all I'm going to do now is hit render batch render and we'll see the outcome. Once the render is complete, we can go view our images and you will notice that we have two folders according to the uh, render layer naming. And in light 1, which is that particular render layer, we have the two passes plus the master beauty. The master beauty it will always come out per layer so it's something to just to put in mind when you're outputting the passes so let's say that we're gonna view the diffuse with no shadow for light one remember it was yellow or a light uh, yellow color for that particular light that's why we have this lighting information and now for layer or actually light two which was the yellow uh, sorry the blue so now we have bluish here and the yellow or the main yellow in here so it came out correctly as we expected same thing with the spec 
So this is how we use the render layers. It can be used to output, or actually, uh, you can use it the old-fashioned way as you did before, and where you right-click and say render layer preset or override, and choose your override. Or uh, you can, which something I would recommend is use it as an organizing tool to put an object or a certain object and uh, for example uh, one light and to output passes so this way you can have the contribution or lighting information for this particular light on this particular object on this layer so your render layers should be used as an organizing tool to put or uh, use it to place objects particular objects on this particular layer this way you can expand your uh, your options when you use your compositing package at the end all right so that was a quick look at the render tokens uh, I would also recommend that you go back to the docs there are a couple of tutorials that are available for you uh, for example uh, how to use the render passes and the render passes overview all right so here's the tutorials there's a couple of videos in here uh, again uh, please try them and uh, Happy rendering.